In case you couldn't tell from the stacks of yarn takes beside me, I finally got myself a yarn winder. So I'm super excited to dive into my yarn winder that I went with, my experience with it so far. And I also wanna give a thank you so much to everybody who commented on, I think it was my yarn organizing video about a yarn winder, cause I had some questions for y'all and y'all really came through. So here are some of the comments that helped me out because there were things I hadn't thought about with a yarn winder until you guys pointed them out to me. So Candy's Yarn Craft, she commented, and let me know about her Knit Picks ball winder. And what she mentioned is that you can recake after caking them. And what she's meaning by that is once you start using a cake and you pull from the center, it gets hollow and may eventually collapse. Because I'm not used to using cakes, except for ones I buy at the store that I couldn't recake because I didn't have a yarn winder, it never occurred to me that if it starts to collapse, I can just recake what's left. Genius, thank you so much for that. And then I had a comment from Marilyn Moster and she gave me some information on her yarn winders. And she mentions that the pros are you can wind yarn much faster and your arm doesn't get as tired. Oh my goodness, after using my yarn winder, you are so right. And another thing, ooh, a little spider on the table. And another thing she mentioned is going with a jumbo yarn winder size. I didn't know before this comment and I started researching that there were different yarn winder sizes. I've pretty much only ever seen the smaller ones and those they say can hold up to about four ounces of yarn. I don't really know what that translates to in yardage, but basically it's a smaller amount of yarn. But a jumbo one like Marilyn suggested is able to hold a lot of yarn and I was able to make some huge cakes like this. So definitely appreciate that suggestion. Bronwyn Watson also suggested getting a bigger yarn winder because they bought a small one and they said they kind of regret it because you end up with smaller cakes and more joins. Again, really great point, very helpful. M560 left a comment suggesting a yarn winder with an open mechanism because their yarn winder needed a bit of oil to run smoothly and it would have been harder because some of them do have the gears encased in plastic. That was a really helpful tip because again, something I hadn't considered because I, you know, I've never used a yarn winder before, so I really appreciate that. And then Sunshine Cook mentioned they have a yarn winder from Stanwood Imports. It holds a whole pound of yarn, mostly metal parts. And I think I got everybody's comments with suggestions on yarn winders. If I missed your comment, I am so sorry. I did read it when you commented it. I just might not have been able to get it to pull up while I was filming this video. But again, thank you so much everyone for the input. Armed with all that information, I started reading online, researching, and basically what I found is there's a lot of different options. There's a lot of smaller model options that run very affordably in you know, the 20 to $30 range. Some of them had mixed reviews, but for the most part, people were pretty happy with their smaller yarn winders. But knowing myself in the yarn I was planning to wind and cake up, I realized I really needed the bigger size. And when I started looking into the bigger size yarn winders, it became very clear to me that Stanwood was the choice to go with. My thinking with going with the Stanwood one is that although it's a bit more expensive than some of the other options out there. If I'm buying a yarn winder, I want one that's going to last me for forever. And if I get the expensive high-end yarn winder and hate it, then I'm gonna be able to tell that I just don't like yarn winders. And if I decide I really hate it, I'd have the option to return it through Amazon. And it also has the options to replace parts, which I thought was pretty cool. So my yarn winder arrived, I don't know, probably a month or two ago at this point. And I got out of the box. They have a little instruction sheet on how to assemble. So it's really simple to assemble but don't be stupid like I was. I read on reviews online on different videos that when you put the long distal arm on that you have to go under the washer and like an idiot, I forgot to lift the washer. I'm going, why won't this fit? Make sure you lift the washer. It'll just fit so much better. And then the bobbin was very simple to get in place. Now, some things I noticed right off the bat. So first of all, the bobbin had a bit of a defect to it. There was a section that is scratched and has green marking and it looks kind of like a smiley face, but something apparently scratched the section of the yarn winder. It's pretty minor, but it is a little rough there. So I did have some concerns about that. And then the only other thought I had straight out of the box was trying to figure out where to actually use my yarn winder because the clamp can only open so wide and I wanted to clamp it to a sturdy surface, but most of the tables and things that I would consider sturdy surfaces, they have that like apron piece where this is the top of your table and you had this piece under here like that and it couldn't get around things like that. So I finally figured out that it would work really great on the peninsula section of the kitchen counter. So I got it all set up and started putting it through the paces. Now I did wind about three cakes off camera before I started filming just to make sure I wouldn't totally embarrass myself and I could make sure that it was working the way it was supposed to and I had everything set up right. But 
But basically what I did was I started winding and I wound a whole bunch of different things. I tested different types of yarn, winding yarn from different forms, whether it was a ball or an unused skein or a crocheted project and things like that. So I decided to start off basic and I tested out winding up some Red Heart yarn. Now I very quickly ran into a couple of issues that I hadn't really considered, but they're pretty easy to work through. So first, because I was winding from a ball of yarn, the ball wanted to go all over the place. And I had a bit of a hard time figuring out how much tension I needed to keep on the yarn as it was feeding through the yarn winder. So what ended up working great for me was to put the ball of yarn into a big bowl and just let it roll around in the ball while it unraveled. Now, if you put the ball of yarn into a bowl as you cake it, the tension of the cake can be a bit varied because sometimes the ball's flying over here and sometimes it's flying over there. Sometimes there's a lot of slack and sometimes it's pulling from the bottom and it takes it a minute to get going. So what I discovered is if I wound straight from a ball with the ball just sitting in a bowl is the cake was a little bit lopsided, but the very simple fix was to immediately re-cake it. So once I did my first cake, it was kind of sloppy. I then immediately re-caked it and it turned out beautifully. And when I re-caked it the second time, it went 10 times faster than the first time. And I held onto the yarn right above the first cake to put a little bit of tension on there. And I got a beautifully wound cake. I think it was also with this one that I ran into another problem I hadn't considered with yarn winders. So if you've been watching my channel recently, you know that I unraveled a ton of crochet projects. And what that means is I had a lot of different colors of yarn, but for a single type of yarn, it was likely broken into several pieces because maybe I unraveled a granny square project, or maybe I used some of this color in this project and some in another project. Both projects got unwound and so the yarn was split. I normally wind my yarn into balls. So if there's a split in the yarn, I simply just just wrap the new piece around and keep going. You can't quite do that with a yarn winder. So what I found to be the simple solution was to feed the new end of yarn through both arms and then tie a small little knot. And the way I tied the knot was very simple. I held both ends together facing the same direction and then did a basic overhand knot. Didn't tie it too tightly. And then I got back to winding and basically that's to hold it together so I can keep winding the cake. The downside is when I go to make a project out of that yarn, I'll either need to cut the knot or untie it because it's not really a sturdy enough not to leave in a crochet project, but I already would have had to join ends anyways because the yarn was split. Okay, so that was the Red Heart yarn. It worked really great. The yarn winder handled it like a pro. Then I tested out some blanket yarn. This was kind of my chunky yarn test because I didn't have a ton of other chunky yarns. And it was so much fun to cake up my Bernat blanket yarn because those things come in such floofy, difficult, tangled, balls of yarn, skeins of yarn, whatever you want to call them when you get them from the store. So it was so satisfying to get it contained better. Having said that, I did have to push the yarn winder to its limits just a little bit because this yarn is so thick and fluffy. It very quickly fills up the whole bobbin. And eventually once you have so much yarn in the bobbin, the arm that spins will hit the side. And then at that point you have to stop winding. So I did have to wind those extra tight to be able to fit the amount of blanket yarn that I had. Having said that, that was not a full entire skein of Bernat blanket yarn. You're not gonna be able to do an entire skein of Bernat blanket yarn. Probably though one skein could make two cakes. Besides the limit on the amount of blanket yarn that I could cake, the blanket yarn worked really well on the yarn winder. Next up, I caked some Mandala yarn, and this was kind of a test of a thinner yarn. I wasn't sure how well the thinner yarns were gonna stay in the little notch at the top of the yarn winder. And let me tell you guys, Mandala yarn was just made to be cake. It obviously comes in cakes already, but this is my most beautiful yarn cake that I made. I just, I love it, I'm obsessed. I had this wound in a ball, but now I can see the colors again and see the flow of the colors. I'm, I'm obsessed, I love it, it's just, it's just beautiful. And of course the Mandala yarn is a bit thinner than Red Heart Super Saver. It's a lot thinner than Bernat Blanket yarn, but I had no issues with it, it wound it wound beautifully. The next yarn I tested on the yarn winder was a whole bunch of Karen Simply Soft. Now people love and hate this yarn. I personally love it. It does split and it is a super slippery yarn. So I wanted to see how well a slippery yarn would cake or if I would just end up with a tangled mess. I had read online for several other yarn winder brands that slippery yarns, specifically Karen Simply Soft, did not cake well, that they'd end up with loose strings, that the cake would be lopsided because it would basically slide apart while it was on the bobbin versus for nicely, but I was happily surprised to find that the Stanwood yarn winder makes very strong, sturdy cakes, even with the slippery yarn. Then I decided to go the ultimate test for thin yarn, 
And I went with crochet thread. It's not really yarn, I suppose, but I kind of put it in the same category. Either way, it's very fine. And also thanks to Candy's Yarn Craft, Candy actually tested this out for me on a Knit Picks yarn winder using a half used cotton thread ball and it came out under half the size. So I appreciate the comment letting me know that it could be done. And I tested it out on mine. And let me tell you, I was so excited by this because it worked great and it made my crochet thread so much more compact because the, the tubes they come on, they have so much empty space in the center of them. So I was really happy to be able to save on some space. Having said that, I haven't actually crocheted from the cake that I made. So I may end up crocheting from the cotton crochet thread cake and find that it doesn't feed well or work well. But for now, I'm very happy. It caked like a charm. It's absolutely adorable and it's saving me so much space. I haven't caked up my other crochet threads, but I'm kind of tempted to cake them all up, but I want to test using it out first. So just keep that little caveat in mind that I haven't actually tested crocheting from a crochet thread cake. So moving right along, I then decided to test out winding an entire skein of Joanne's Big Twist yarn. It's their, I guess their value one. And those things are some big skeins of yarn. So I was really interested to test how well the yarn would feed from a store skein into a cake. And I also wanted to see if I could fit an entire Joanne's Big Twist onto my yarn winder. And I'm happy to say that both went very well. Now you do have to keep an eye out for yarn bar from the middle of the skein. And what I found helped was kind of just placing my hand gently on top of the skein to create just a little bit of tension and it ended up caking really well. So here are some of the cakes I ended up with. It's just beautiful. Now it's center pull. It's very secure. I don't have this big long floppy thing that's gonna collapse as I crochet with it. And I suppose this is also a good time to point out that you can change the size of your yarn cake depending on the tension. So I have some health issues and I fatigue easily, don't have a lot of strength at times. So when I'm doing the yarn winder, it's actually very easy. I'm able to handle it very well, but I'm not putting a ton of effort and energy into it and I'm not putting tons of tension on it. My sister on the other hand, when she crochets, she puts a lot of tension on her yarn and it kind of translated over to when she caked some of her yarn skeins on there. So these are all big twist yarn here. They're all basically the same amount of yardage, but as you can see, this one is super compact. This one's kind of a medium size and this one's bigger and has a lot more squish to it. So with this one, she put a lot of tension both on the yarn and really cranked it really fast. And so it made it really compact and sturdy and solid. But with these ones, I had to go a little bit looser so it would feed better from the center of the yarn cake for me. And these ended up just a little bit bigger than this cake, even though it's the same amount of yarn. So I had just a few more tests I wanted to do. I wanted to try out caking some True Boot because I'm about to start on my project with this yarn and I really hate the little shape that they come in. It just, it was kind of difficult to feed off of it. And this is an extremely slippery yarn, way more so than Karen Simply Soft. It had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning as I got it going, but once I kind of got into the groove with this yarn, it caked so beautifully. This yarn was made to be caked. It is so satisfying in this form. I mean, just, just look at this beauty. Just admire it. I'm very obsessed in case you can't tell. So slippery bamboo, rayon, trubu yarns, the Stanwood can handle it. I tested out some cotton yarn, Cotton yarn, we handled it great, no issues there, nothing really new to comment on. I also wanted to try out, I cut this down as funky yarn for the category. Basically yarns that aren't a consistent texture. And of course I used everybody's favorite, Homespun Lying Brand. I personally love this yarn, a lot of people don't, but it has a lot of texture, it can snag really easily. But let me tell you, this yarn is another yarn that I think was made to be caked. This yarn has never looked so good. And despite the differences in texture and thickness of the yarn throughout the skein, the Stanwood handled it just fine. So the next thing I tested out was unwinding a crochet project. I made a little swatch and then unwound it and it worked really well with certain yarns. I was first trying with a project that used very fine yarn that snagged and split when I was crocheting with it. It didn't go well because I had to like take great strength to rip it apart and frog it. So it didn't really go well with the yarn winder, but then I had a little cotton swatch that I made to test unwinding and it came undone like a charm very smoothly, it had great tension. I just held onto the crochet project, cranked the yarn winder handle. It worked great. All right, so now that you have seen the Stanley Yarn Winer in action, let me share my thoughts and kind of my experience with this. So right off the bat, something I did notice is these are not compact as yarn balls. In the past, I've always wound my yarn into balls and I tend to wind them very tightly. Some people say you shouldn't do that. I haven't really noticed it making a difference with my yarn, but some types of fibers I've heard that it can impact the elasticity. So just keep that in mind. Um, in my case, it hasn't really made a difference. But anyways, I tended to wind my balls of yarn very tight and compact. The Stanwood leaves the yarn not quite 
quite as compact. Now, if you really wanted to, you can cake this very tightly like my sister did on this one if you wanna save on space. Again, a lot of people recommend against this. I don't necessarily know that it will harm your yarn, but even though it's gonna take up more space, I think it's going to help me overall stay organized because now I can stack these and I'm not constantly having balls unwinding and getting tangled when I throw them into a bucket and things like that. As far as working with the Stanwig Yarn Winder, I'm overall pretty happy with it. It was very smooth winding and I love having the center pull. It just feeds so nicely and it's really fast, so much faster than winding balls of yarn by hand. Now, I kind of want to talk through this, whether I, if I could go back in time, would I get a yarn winder sooner? And the answer is yes and no. So if I could go back, I would get it sooner, but I would get it about three months sooner and basically I would get it before I started unraveling all my projects. The thought popped into my head before I started unraveling all those projects, but I severely underestimated how much yarn I was going to end up with and how much yarn I was gonna wind into balls by hand. But if I had realized, I definitely would have bought it before that project. Now, would I have bought it, say, a year ago, two years ago, five years ago? Probably not. I've been crocheting for about, I don't know, 12, 13 years or so at this point. And for this whole time, I've been very happy without a yarn winder. You know, I've gotten by just fine winding by hand. Having said that though, before I started my YouTube channel, I really didn't buy as much yarn as I do now. Now I'm constantly buying yarn because I'm testing things out, making projects, making videos. So I kind of have an excuse to go out and buy more yarn. So there's definitely a lot more yarn to wind up. Whereas before I started my channel, I really didn't buy yarn very often and I'm just really not a big shopper, not a big spender. So every time I'm like spending money, I'm like, I really want the yarn, but can I justify the price tag? But now of course with my YouTube channel, I'm able to fund my hobby and I can kind of justify spending the money on yarn or spending a lot of money on a yarn winder. So while I wanna say that everybody has to go get a yarn winder, at this point in my life, I am happy I got one, but I don't necessarily think I needed one say two years ago. So that's most of my thoughts on the yarn winder, very positive overall, but there is one thing I do want to mention because because I do think it matters, especially when you're buying a $90 product. So when I first opened the yarn winder, as I mentioned, there was a scratch on the bobbin. And when I first opened it, I was immediately like bummed out because, oh, it just doesn't look as pretty, you know, and I was concerned maybe it's gonna snag the yarn. I did end up using it for several skeins and I didn't really notice it snagging the yarn, but that was kind of still on the back of my head. And it's not a big deal, but the more I thought about it, the more it was kind of bothering me that I spent $90 on a product and it came with the defect. If I bought a $20 yarn winder and there was a scratch on the bobbin, I probably would have been like, whatever. But at the $90 price point, it, it just didn't sit quite right with me. So I was debating, maybe I should reach out, see what they'll do. But then something happened that I was like, I'm definitely contacting Stanwood. And that is that my handle snapped on day three of using it. So for context, my yarn winder came, I put the box on my table, I opened it on the table, brought it to the counter right next to it, attached it, used it day one, counter into the box. Day two, from the box to the counter, used it from the counter to the box. Day three, from the box to the counter, and as I was setting it up, I noticed this very large crack in the handle. Obviously, I was not happy. One of the big reasons I went with Stanwood was because it has a good name for quality, it's sturdy construction, designed to last, et cetera, et cetera, and on day three, the handle had a very large crack in it. Now, this didn't really make an impact on usage, but I was concerned it would crack the rest of the way and that plastic piece would come off completely and then it wouldn't be usable. So I started typing up a nice little email with pictures of both the bobbin and the handle to send into Stanwood. And as I was working, I was like, oh, I've got video footage. Let me check and see when the handle actually snapped. And what I found is that on like my fourth skein ever on day one, the crack was starting to form. So I reached out to Stanwood basically saying, hey, I'm really happy with the product. It works great, but I'm of course disappointed with the defect on the bobbin and the handle cracking. What can we do? I'd really like to either get replacement parts sent out or exchange this one. Now I bought my yarn winder through Amazon and I could have just done the exchange on Amazon directly. They have been really great with me in the past when I've been able to show, hey, this product has a defect. This product wasn't as advertised that they've been really good to either refund or exchange. But since I was already working on a review video, I wanted to reach out to Stanwood directly to see what they would do and how they would handle it. And overall, I was happy with how they handled it. Stanwood responded saying it looked like my yarn winder had a rough transit to get here and they'd be happy to send me a new handle and a new bobbin. I don't necessarily think the handle was cracked during transit because the box wasn't busted in or anything, but it did look like the handle has sustained some kind of probably impact. And the crack was already there when I got it and was just slowly expanding over time. It didn't look like the crack was because this is a cheap product. The handle is very thick plastic, which is honestly why I was 
was so surprised that it cracked. But my guess is whether it was in the factory, whether when Amazon had it during shipping, who knows, that it sustained some kind of impact or distress and that caused the handle to crack. So anyways, I swapped out the handle. That ended up being a little bit of an ordeal and kind of made me wish I had just exchanged for an entirely new yarn winder via Amazon. But eventually I got a socket that could get in there. Now the instructions they sent were instructions for replacing the gear, which at first I was like, this isn't helpful. But if you read through there, you realize that, oh, when you replace the gear, you have to take the handle out. So the instructions are kind of buried in there because I did have to assemble basically everything. When I was disassembling, I had some concerns because some of them are really tight. I don't have a lot of strength and I was concerned that I might not be able to fasten everything back together tightly enough to get it to work well but I was able to get it securely back together and now that I've reassembled it with the new handle it works just as great as when I first got it. So with that said I am very happy with this product. I will also say that this yarn winder and perhaps it's all yarn winders but I only know for sure for this yarn winder it's very beginner friendly right out of the box I was able to get the hang of it. Of course you can kind of improve your technique with your tension and things like that or figuring little tricks out like putting a ball into a bowl to make it easier, things like that. But from the get-go, you should be able to start winding beautiful yarn cakes. The last thing I want to mention is I don't work with hanks normally, so I didn't have a need for a swift, but Stanwood also sells a swift that you can put your yarn hanks on, but I don't personally work with that often. I'm usually just working with store-bought yarns. So to sum it all up, the Stanwood Jumbo Yarn Winder is everything I've ever wanted in a yarn winder. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I hope you'll have an awesome week. Happy crafting.